Today's video sponsor is GVG More, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. So it seems that I actually want to make other videos, other kind of videos without being the driver of videos, but it seems that AMD just can't give me a break. The AMD Fluid Motion Preview drivers were updated, and guess what? After thousands of people actually asking this from AMD, AMD finally activated the Fluid Motion frames for the RX 6000 series. It basically includes everything that the drivers for the 7000 series do. For these new updated drivers, we have new feature highlights with AMD Fluid Motion Frames, AFMF, technical preview that boosts FPS with frame generation technology for a smoother gaming experience. And now, as you see, AFMF adds frame generation technology for DirectX 11 and 12 games on AMD RX 7000 and now 6000 series desktop graphics cards. <laughs> Also saying we are responding to the excitement from our community and are adding support for Radeon RX 6000 series desktop graphics cards. And these updated technical preview drivers that once again don't forget these are beta drivers, basically a technical preview is a beta driver, meaning that AFMF fluid motion frames will improve a lot, or at least they, they need to improve a lot in order to be, uh, well, able to be used properly in let's say almost all titles because they aren't for now at least and we have new things like what's next where AMD says we are currently working on improving the overall smoothness and image quality of AFMF which is like I was talking about a must because yeah because it's a must it's really a must uh, the image quality is still pretty pretty rudimentary um, at least on the 6000 series and even on the 7000 series and if you are going for lower frame rates where for example the LSS frame generation works pretty well uh, let's say even at 40-ish, 50-ish FPS the frame generation will do its job pretty well despite some, well, some ghosting scenarios but overall it will do its job pretty well uh, while um, not, neither FSR3 nor frame generation FF <laughs> AFMF can actually do it. As AMD states themselves, AFMF is recommended to be enabled for games running at a minimum FPS of 55 FPS for 1080p displays, because we have less pixels, and 70 FPS for 1440p or above displays. But they are saying that they will improve the image quality and smoothness to reduce the ghosting, to reduce the motion artifacts and so on. We also have some more fixed issues compared to the previous driver version, to the previous revision, let's say, with AMD Software Adrenaline Edition may fail to install on some systems, AFMF status indicator may suggest disabling HDR when it is already disabled, and the last fixed issue is ABSOD may be experienced during installation on certain systems, as reported by the community. And as for the known issues, they are exactly the same as the previous ones, and you can see with the link in the description the known issues, the fixed issues, the, what AMD advises, how AFMF actually works, and so on, so on, so on. Basically, you can use Fluid Motion on any DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 game, now with, a, with the RX 6000 series as well, basically the RDNA 2 GPUs. Now, is it really advisable? Mm. Well, since this technology was made with the RX 7000 series in mind, but people of course complained a lot for not being able to use the technology on the 6000 series and blah 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 blah. Um, what I mean with this is that since it was with the 7000 series in mind, it actually works better with the 7000 series. I tested for example on my 7900 XTX and it works considerably better than with the 6750 XT at the same time exact FPS. I don't really know why or how, but it does. I tested, for example, at 78 FPS locked with both the 6750 XT and the 7900 XTX, and the 7900 XTX actually had less motion artifacts. With a 76, with a 6750 XT, sorry, we have lots of motion artifacts here and there. Not always, not always, of course, and I'll tell you once again, not always, for example, in third-person games, or maybe when driving the car, well, when driving the car, the, the fluid motion frames actually had 
more smoothness and you can't really see the motion artifacts that well okay you kind of ignore them your brains ignores them but as soon as you go into first person mode and you start moving your mouse around well you can definitely notice the difference in between the 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 native frames and the fluid motion frames because although you have less fps with the native frames the frames are correct all of the frames are correct and you don't have motion artifacts it looks much better overall for example if you are able to to achieve let's say 80 or 85 90 fps or even 70 75 fps without the frame generation well just keep it this way at least for the 6000 series and in most games at least in cyberpunk well i completely advise you to to play at 80 fps FPS native without using the um, well without using the fake frames from the from the frame generation the fluid motion because you'll have a less good experience let's say not worse per se just less good because it is better in some in some parts once again better smoothness but at the same time you have more motion artifacts when you're moving around in some areas not all areas so it's a give and take I guess just pick your poison and by the way, another thing of these drivers, another fine thing of these drivers is that since you can use the 6000 series with these drivers now, you can also have the 90 and 120 FPS option in the recording tab, meaning that you can use your older GPU, your 6000 series GPU, to record at 90 and 120 average FPS. So your games recorded can now run at 90 and 120 FPS, which is nice for people, for example, I didn't even think of... I didn't even think of that before, but I actually had some, some people commenting in the comment section telling me that for people wanting to use slow motion uh, in some videos because we do have more frames, so slow motion appears better, we can see it better. It's, it's actually a nice thing to have 90 and 120 average FPS and it works. I tested on the 7000 series, I tested it on the, um, on the 6750 XT and it works, which once again is very nice. And now just to end with the AMD fluid motion frames, my opinion is that if you're running at least at let's say 70, 80, 80, 90 frames, if you're if you can actually push 90 frames in first person shooter games, just leave those 90 those 90 frames, just play like that. You can try the MD fluid motion frames, it won't hurt. At the same time, of course, the fluid motion frames will actually decrease your base FPS because it at least on the 6000 series it takes a little from the from the base fps but at the same time it generates double the frames to increase the smoothness but once again in most scenarios you'll have less image fidelity because you're having movement artifacts thing that you don't have without the amd fluid motion frames once again it's a give and take you have more smoothness if you're playing let's say for example um uh, games like, let's say, Lineage and some other games that don't move the camera too fast, well, you are, completely, you are completely fine, let's say, for example, even Marvel Midnight Suns, games like that, turn-based games, Baldur's Gate 3, maybe the fluid motion frames can actually help because, once again, it is not about latency in these games and uh, the, mo the, the movements are way smoother than in games like CSGO, games like Starfield, where we have the guns and so on and we move the camera around very fast. So in those games, fluid motion frames can actually help. In other games, my advice is just to keep the fluid motion off. And by the way, I just forgot to say this, Radeon Boost is back. In the previous drivers, I believe they exchanged the Radeon Boost for the fluid motion frames. And now with this newer revision, we have the fluid motion frames and the Radeon Boost to be, well, to be used. Thing that wasn't here before. And well guys, that's all for today's video, thanks a lot for watching this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about AMD fluid motion frames, don't forget that you'll have motion artifacts, you'll have, you'll have higher smoothness, but you'll most likely have visual artifacts, even more if you're going from very low FPS numbers. Um, this is not FSR3, okay? Fluid motion frames and FSR3 are different things. FSR3 is better, has lower input latency compared to fluid motion frames, okay? And has better image quality, but can't be used in all games, while fluid motion frames can. And as soon as this technology gets better and better with time, it will be a pretty nice addition to the AMD software kit. Once again, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. And just once again, Leave your comment in the comment section and really let me know what's your experience with the 6000 series with fluid motion because I had this experience but that doesn't mean that you'll have the same one. Uh, you may actually have a better experience than mine but well I don't really know. Let's hope you do. Thank you and see you in the next one. Cheers.